we meet in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to Mitcham Parish Church, to the high altar where we celebrate the festival, the great feast of the Epiphany, the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. And today we particularly remember when the three magi came to visit the Christ child in the manger. Although it's very difficult for you at home to see, particularly amidst the Last Supper behind us, but we have the three kings standing on the altar, actually approaching the Christ child in the center. And that will be the center of our prayers in a few moments' time. But first, let us ask God to prepare our hearts and minds properly to worship him this morning, to worship the Christ child and to give thanks for the coming of God to earth by saying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. So let us now confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. Let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we who know you now by faith may at last behold your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to looking at the figures of the three magi standing here on the altar, two standing and one here in adoration, and a small figure of Christ from our crib, surrounded by light. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, to you be praise and glory forever. As gold in the furnace is tried and purified seven times in the fire, so purify our hearts and minds that we may be a royal priesthood acceptable to the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, to you be praise and glory forever. As our prayer rises up before you as incense, so may we be presented before you with penitent hearts and uplifted hands to offer ourselves in your priestly service. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. To you be praise and glory forever. As you give medicine to heal our sickness and the leaves of the tree of life for the healing of the nations, so anoint us with your healing power that we may be the first fruits of your new creation. 
Blessed be God forever. Lord, accept your people's gifts, not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. To God be glory forever and ever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Let us pray. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us, that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now attend to the reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephra, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ was revealed in the flesh and proclaimed among the nations and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Now when King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned for, from them the exact time when the star had appeared. He then sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, many stories we remember for our own childhoods are stories of quests. I'm sure you'd agree with me, where the hero leaves the world of the familiar and sets out for an unknown country in search of something or someone special. Or they have a very special and sometimes secret mission. Many of our great religious stories also follow the same pattern Tales of people like Abraham and Moses who leave their homes for unfamiliar places and risk a legion of misfortunes, hoping that they will find peace and prosperity. In Matthew's Gospel, we have one of the most popular religious quest stories, probably of all times, in the wise men, the astrologers, come from the east to seek the infant king of the Jews, the Christ child and to bring him their prophetic gift. In writing his gospel towards the end of the first century, Matthew is aware that Judaism has rejected Jesus as the Christ, while many pagans, the Gentiles, have accepted him. That situation is reflected in the story when we see King Herod and the Jewish leaders united in their rejection of Jesus while the pagan travelers from faraway lands come to worship the child king of the Jews. The star leads the wise men to Jerusalem, 
where their inquiry causes confusion and chaos in the, the city. And King Herod is especially nervous. He is portrayed like the Pharaoh at the time of the exodus from Egypt. The Jewish historian Josephus tells us of the ancient legend surrounding Pharaoh. He was warned by astrologers that a liberator would be born who would lead the captive Hebrews to freedom. Pharaoh responded by ordering the massacre of newborn male children to ensure the liberator would never survive. However, the father of Moses was forewarned in a dream, and Moses escaped to become the great leader of Israel. And now, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is the new Moses and the new Israel. I called my son out of Egypt. And then there is King Herod, who stood as the second pharaoh, whose ruthlessness leads him to massacre innocent children. So Joseph is fortunately warned in a dream to flee with the mother and the child. The Magi are seeking the king of the Jews, ironically a title that was given to Herod by the Romans. He was ruler over all the Jewish territories for 40 years, and Herod was merciless when his own security was threatened. Proof of that is that he murdered one of his wives and two of his sons, as well as condemning the innocent. In today's story, King Herod wants to know where this new king is. But Matthew knows that neither the rulers of Judea nor the chief priests and the teachers of the law are interested in doing homage to this Jesus. In the story of the Magi, Jesus, who was given first to the Jews as their king, is now given to all people. He is for all nations. The wise men from the east continue their quest and come to journey's end in Bethlehem, where the star halts over a house. They enter it and see the child with his mother Mary. They pay homage to the child, leaving their unusual gift of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and then quietly return to their own country without re-reporting to Herod. This is the only gospel, Matthew's gospel, and we ask, what does it mean? We sense that Matthew is telling us a wonderful truth, revealing to us really good news, that the same promise has be, that has been made to them in Christ Jesus is made to us. That is, this is the meaning of the story of the Magi. Matthew describes beautifully the truth that Jesus is for all people. The Magi are the Gentiles, the non-Jews, like ourselves, and come from all over the world, and we can find Jesus and do him homage likewise. He is the infant king of the Jews, but is not the exclusive property of any tribe or nation. He belongs to us all, and we can all belong to him. For Jesus is our journey's end, the goal of all who seek the face of God, for all who seek for meaning and purpose in their lives. He came not only for the chosen race, but for the human race. He was given by God for us all. When the wise men leave their gifts with the Christ child, they actually take away almost more than they gave. They take away a treasure that surpasses anything they brought to themselves. They take away the gift of knowing who Jesus is. They are enriched by their encounter with him, and they can encourage others with their experience. You could say that they represent all those who journey in hope to find Jesus and who find in him their heart's desire. So the wise men don't stay in Judea once they have found this treasure. They don't build a monument to mark the place of discovery. No, they return to their own country 
again showing that faith in Jesus is not limited to any geographical boundary, but is a gift to be shared with others. And they wanted to get home to share the gospel, the good news, the fact that they had found the Christ child. Our presence gathered here this morning in worship numbers us among those who seek the face of the living God. And we come each week, or more frequently, to celebrate our faith in Jesus. And at the end of the Eucharist, in the final words, we are sent to share with others what we have experienced here. We find Christ here in the Word and in the breaking and sharing of the bread in the midst of this, our community. So each time we come to the altar, either physically or spiritually, let us celebrate the presence of the Lord here and enrich and encourage the lives of others with the light that's been revealed to us. In a sense, you know, the wise men are the ancestors of all of us who are sincere seekers. They're all searching, searching for love, searching for acceptance, searching for understanding. And we know that the journey towards wholeness and holiness is a journey without end. It will go on throughout our lives and beyond our lives. We don't have stars in the sky to guide us. But even the wise men had to stop being stargazers and consult the scriptures and to ask people where they should be going. We don't have stars to guide us, but we do have the scriptures and each other in our journey towards God. The scriptures and the star led the wise men from the east to Bethlehem. Bethlehem, which literally means house of bread. And this is where our journey has led us to today. Here in this house of bread, we find the presence of God in the Eucharist, and we kneel and we adore. We come here to this place as seekers, hoping to find Jesus in the word of the scriptures and in the breaking and the sharing of the bread. We believe that the scriptures will lead us to him again and again, and that we can commune with him in the blessed sacrament of the altar, the sacred body of our Lord and our God. Both in the word and in the sacrament, we are privileged to discover Jesus, and we are led to meet him in each other, but let us remember that in our frailty and brokenness, the Lord is present in each one of us gathered here today. To God be the glory for the epiphany of his Son. Amen. And so now we move on to our intercessions as we pray to the Father. And I say, Lord of glory, in your mercy, please reply, hear our prayer. Let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. The wise men came from the east to worship your Son. Father, grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration and praise. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, for Christopher and Richard, our bishops, and all within Christian communities throughout the world. Lord of glory, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The infant Christ received gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. Father, accept the offering of our hearts and minds this day. Lord of glory, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ in the Incarnation. Father, grant an abundance of peace to your world. 
as we pray for leaders and governments of the nation. Lord, of glory in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Holy Family lived in exile and in the valley in the shadow of death. Father, look in mercy on all who are poor or powerless, and all who suffer or are ill. Lord of glory, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, in your mercy, we remember that your Son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. Father, protect in your love our homes, our relatives, our friends, and our communities. As we pray especially today for Mary Hart, Simon Emin, Father Nigel Stone, Jeannie Oy, Betty Smith, Paul Barry, Catherine Payne Gray, Peter Onunquo, Andrew McMinn, Jesse Willoughby, Annie Gill, Deborah Chapman, Joyce Nelson, Dylan Long, and Robert Willer. We ask that you will be with them this day. Lord of glory, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in our fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the magi, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and alongside St. Peter and St. Paul, and all the faithful departed. We remember those who have gone before us, among them Rob Cash, Tony Lambda, Johan Fernanda, and Chinwe Onunku. We bless you and thank you for their love. Rest eternal grant them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Lord of glory, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your unfailing love for us and for all people, Father, hear and answer our prayers through the merits of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I invite you to stand for the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you very much. Let's offer one another a sign of peace or pray for those who we do not see today. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through to the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the word a new light has dawned upon the world that all the nations may be brought out of darkness to see the radiance of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, earth, man, love, are full of your glory. our praises heavenly father through your son our saviour jesus christ and as we follow his example and obey his command grant that by the power of your holy spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your son jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For well, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Uh, 
as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold God's holy gift for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Lord God, the blight splendor whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, namely Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. But when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen indeed, and a very warm welcome to you all here as you worship with us here at Mitcham Parish Church this morning. The most important message I can give you all at the moment is stay safe, and stay at home and look after yourselves very carefully as we continue through this pandemic. I'm sure some of you are really very concerned at the moment and our prayers are with you as we continue our worship. And we shall continue to pray for you day after day as we continue our worship here in church. Services continue as usual online. We we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday at 9.30 and again next Sunday, if not before. Meanwhile, God bless and keep well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.